Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. So in today's video, we'll be going over the basics of Chaos Destruction and how to set up a destructible mesh in your game. So let me hit Simulate and show you what we're going to make today. You can see I have these two cubes here which have fallen down and they have then been destructed. They've been kind of exploded here. They've basically broken upon impact. And it doesn't just have to be from falling, it can be from shooting or from colliding with anything you want. But in the example I've got here, I've just got them falling as that's easy to showcase. So this is what we're we'll going over and creating today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So this is actually very easy and very simple to do. What we want to do is we first want to get the mesh and the objects which we want to destroy. So I'm just going to duplicate one of these blue boxes here and use this. This is what I want to destroy. You can use anything you want, but just make sure you have it in your world already. You want to then select it and then you want to go to select mode and go to Fracture, or alternatively, you can press Shift-6. You should then get something which looks like this. What we want to do first is we want to just press New under Generate. You can save this wherever you want and give it any name you want, but you want to create the geometry collection like so. Now, I'm not gonna be going over a lot of these options here, but the main ones we want to look at are the Fracture, and I'm gonna be going with Uniform. However, you can use Cluster, Radial, Planar, whichever ones of these you like, Radial would be good if you are shooting something, Cluster would maybe be good if you're exploding something, and Uniform is just a nice simple one to go with, so that's what I'm going to be going with here. And you can obviously modify all of these settings here as well if you want to, so you can change the seed, I'm just going to keep it as random, so minus one is random every time. You can change the minimum and maximum sites, all of these things here you can completely change, however the basic default settings are already very good for what we want. So then we can just press Fracture, and you can see we now have level 0, 1, that is what it is by default. Level 1 has 20, if we press it again, level 2 has 109, and so this is the individual pieces. So you can keep pressing Fracture to get more and more pieces if you want, but obviously the more pieces you have, the more the game needs to render and load in, so the laggy it will be. Especially if you have a lot of destructible meshes, I wouldn't recommend doing this too much. So I'm just going to maybe do it one more time for the purpose of the video. So we have 319 here. And as I said, this is very simple. That is literally all we need to do for this. So this is a lot easier than it was in UE4. But again, you can do any of these settings which you want, but I'm going to go with this. Now let's just go back to our select mode. And then you can see we still have it looking like this multicolored cube here with all the individual pieces colored. We obviously don't want that. So let's select it, search for bone, and then we're going to untick show bone colors and now it is back to normal so this is especially good if you're doing it on like a building for example you obviously don't want it to look how it, like that you want it to look how it's supposed to and now this will work by default if i were to raise this up and then just simulate and let it fall that is going to break to pieces like that and if i were to place it even higher and then maybe also increase the gravity scale of this so it's going to fall down even quicker so let's increase the mass let's say it weighs 500 kilograms make it really heavy it's going to fall down quite fast and it's going to break apart as you can see there so that's very very simple so that's how you can do it with colliding so you can have it fall it's colliding with the ground you can have something else go into it which collides with it but what if we wanted to have it so we can shoot it well it's the same thing it's literally it's just collision so you're colliding a bullet with the cube so let's just make sure it's not going to break it is so let's put it straight on the ground so it won't break as you can see here like so. So let's have a go in the first person template. Let's open up our first person projectile. So for me that's content, first person, blueprints, BP first person projectile, or just use your bullet, your bullet blueprint, or whatever it is that you want to shoot at it. We will select the sphere, or basically your bullet mesh, and we want to make sure the collision presets are block all. So the bullet is actually going to collide with the object. And then that's pretty much all we need to do. However, this might not work straight away because it might be too small, so it doesn't have enough force to actually do anything. So let's test it out. And as you can see there, it didn't. So what we can do is maybe just increase the mass of this and see if that makes a difference. So let's increase the mass to, that's 1500. Let's see if that is still like that now, or whether it needs to be increased more. It will need to be increased. So let's go to 10,000, quite high. This might not work, we might just need to change the scale. As you see there, that doesn't work. So what we'll do instead is we'll just increase the scale of the mesh. Let's set it to one 
instead of 0.1 this is obviously going to look absolutely massive so we can see there that that has made a difference that has now worked so set it to 0.2 see if that is going to be enough and as you can see it is so it doesn't need to be that much bigger to be honest as you see this is working and I think it's just going so far because I've increased the, ma the mass of it so much but you can see this is now working it's very easy to set up a very simple fractured mesh so let's just one more time get another one and I will do a separate one just to show it working differently so let's go back into fracture generate new create it and then let's do cluster on this one fracture it a couple times and then again that's all we need to do so now let's turn off the colors for it and then simulate this and see what this one looks like so you can see the difference that makes there it fractured based upon where it was hit so the top is fine because it wasn't hit like that so if I were to rotate it onto its side a little bit like this you'll see it will look different once again and as it's being hit multiple times it keeps breaking down because of the multiple fractures that we put in it down here that's the wrong one sorry if we go here we can see we have multiple levels inside of it which is why we can then have the multiple breakdowns as it keeps hitting the floor and as it keeps colliding with everything so thanks so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you found it helpful and if you did please do make sure to like and subscribe down below so thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one